Handbrake is one of the most popular programs around for MPEG-4 video encoding. Although it's probably best known as a tool for owners of Apple devices, ranging from iPods and iPhones to Apple TV set-top boxes, that's really just a small part of what it can be used for. If you are using Handbrake to create video files for playback on an Apple device or in Apple software, you can use one of the included profiles to set almost every option automatically. This series of videos is intended to show how to set these options yourself and even create your own custom profiles, making encoding for non-Apple devices and software just as easy. For more detailed instructions on using Handbrake to create video files for a specific device, visit AfterDawn.com's Guides section. There you'll find written guides which include portions of these videos, but also details specific to particular devices. Of course, there are a lot of programs available for making MPEG-4 videos, so why should you use Handbrake? There are a few factors in its favor. The most important reasons for most people would be the price, free, and ease of use. The price should be self-explanatory, but just being free doesn't actually set it apart from most of the competition. In fact, most of the best MPEG-4 conversion tools are free. Being easy to use, on the other hand, is a lot rarer. Encoding video and audio and putting them together is much more complicated than you might expect. As a result, many of the best tools for those jobs can be difficult just to begin using, let alone to master. Handbrake is simpler than most. The downside to this simplicity is that it can make things more difficult if you're starting with some types of sources, such as video you've captured from sources like analog TV broadcasts or videotape, or even professionally produced sources which have been improperly handled somewhere along the way. However, most of the time, those limitations aren't an issue. Behind the scenes, Handbrake has a lot in common with most of those other programs, including the use of standard tools like X264 and FFmpeg, which have become de facto standards in free and open source video tools and its selection of output formats, which include two different types of MPEG-4 video, AAC, Dolby Digital, and DTS Audio, and a choice of graphics or text-based subtitles, all stored in an MP4 or MKV container, allow you to produce files compatible with nearly any type of modern device. The best way to decide if Handbrake is a good choice for you is to try it out for yourself. You can download the latest version of Handbrake from the AfterDawn.com software section. Simply search for Handbrake, and make sure to download the Windows version. Once your download finishes, run the installer and follow through the steps in the wizard. If you're using a version of Windows newer than Windows XP, such as Windows Vista or Windows 7, it's a good idea to install software somewhere other than the default location of the Program Files or Program Files x86 folder. Click the Browse button and then select a different folder. In my case, I have a Multimedia Tools and Multimedia Tools x86 folder. That's because I have a 64-bit version of Windows. I'll select x86 simply because this is a 32-bit program. You can also click on the Make New Folder button to create a new folder at this time. Once Handbrake is installed, you'll be given the option to run it immediately, which we'll do to look at some basic configuration options. The first time you run Handbrake, it's a good idea to set a few basic options which will come into play every time you use it. You can access these settings by selecting Options from the Tools menu. The first setting to look at is Output Files, which you can find on the General tab of the Options dialog. If you have Automatically Name Output Files checked, at a minimum you'll need to select the folder Handbrake will create output files in by default. You can change the location for individual encoding jobs. To set the location, click the Browse button, 
and then navigate to the location on one of your hard drives where you'd like to save files. Click OK and the default path will be updated. You may also want to change the format setting. This determines how Handbrake automatically generates file names. Notice the curly braces around the initial options. They tell you Handbrake will be replacing the source and title with the name of your source file or for DVD sources either the volume name of the disk or the name of the folder containing your video TS folder. Title refers to the title number selected from a DVD source. A third option of chapters is also available, but isn't really all that useful most of the time. In addition to these placeholders, you can add regular text to the automatic name. For example, if you want the source name to be in parentheses, you could add them around the source curly braces, like so. In most cases, I recommend setting this to just source, but it's completely up to you. As with the location, you can set the output file name manually for each job. The last option under output files is specifically for compatibility with Apple devices and software. If you're going to use Apple software or hardware, including QuickTime, iTunes, iPods, iPhones, or Apple TV boxes, to play the files created by Handbrake, leave this checked. This will ensure Handbrake's output files will always end in .m4b instead of the standard .mp4, for .mp4 files. On the Picture tab, you can set the location of the VLC media player, which Handbrake uses for previewing the results of filtering operations like deinterlacing and denoising. Since VLC isn't included with Handbrake, you'll need to download and install it separately. You can download the latest version of VLC Media Player from AfterDon.com's software section. Type VLC in the search box and click the search button. Make sure to select the Windows version. Once your download completes, run the installer. The wizard should guide you through all the steps required to install VLC. If you want to use VLC as a media player within Firefox, check the Mozilla plugin box. Use the Browse button to change the location VLC will be installed to. If you're running a version of Windows newer than Windows XP, such as Vista or Windows 7, it's a good idea not to install to the Program Files or Program Files x86 folders. You can create your own folder using the Make New Folder button, or if you already have one set up, such as Multimedia Tools 86, x86 rather, which I've set up on my system, you can select that. Click the Install button, files will be copied to your computer, and VLC installation will complete. When you run VLC Media Player for the first time, you'll be given the option to turn off fetching media information from the internet and automatic update checking. By default, these will both be selected, so if you don't want it to do these things for you automatically, make sure to uncheck them. Otherwise, just click OK. If VLC is installed in the Program Files folder on your C drive, there's no additional configuration for it in Handbrake. If it's located in a different folder, you'll need to update the VLC path so Handbrake knows where to find it if you want to use VLC to preview filtering. Do that with the Browse button. Navigate to the folder where VLC is installed. 
Mine is installed in a multimedia tools folder. I then go to the VLC directory and double click on VLC.exe. The path is automatically updated in the dialog. On the audio and subtitles tab, you can set your preferred language and whether you want Handbrake to select both audio and subtitles in that language or simply subtitles. First, you need to set your preferred language using the drop down box. Type the first letter to quickly navigate through the list. If you select Dub Foreign Language Audio, Handbrake will attempt to select the primary audio and subtitle track in your preferred language. If your sources are primarily in a language other than the preferred one, and you want to keep subtitles in your preferred language but audio in the original, you should leave it set to use Foreign Language Audio. If your source contains audio in multiple languages, Handbrake has no way of determining which is the original and which are dubbed. Generally, it's best to stick with dubbed foreign language and select audio and subtitle tracks manually, which you can do for each encoding job regardless of how this is set. Once you have your audio and subtitle options set, click the close button to close this dialog and you're ready to continue on to loading your source video.